Hey guys, it's Max. In this video, I'm gonna be comparing the brand new 2019 5K iMac to the $5,000 iMac Pro. We're gonna be taking a look at video editing and we're gonna look at Final Cut, Premiere Pro, and DaVinci Resolve, looking at a wide variety of codecs. Now, to give you guys a spoiler, uh, overall, I looked at all the programs, all the codecs, all the tests I ran, the iMac was actually 13% faster. That's averaged out. But don't place your orders just yet because in some cases, the iMac Pro was actually twice as fast as this iMac. So it really depends on what you're doing, what program you're using, and what codecs you're working. So we're gonna look at all of that. I'm gonna break it down for you guys. At the end of this video, I'm gonna be comparing some different configurations and showing you where in some cases, you could save up to $3,200 by going with a regular iMac and get the same or better performance, where in other cases, the price difference is very minimal. And in that case, you should probably spend the extra money on the iMac Pro. Now, if you're somebody that has a previous iMac and you're thinking about upgrading, I've actually compared this same iMac to a top of the line 2017 5K iMac and the gains were pretty significant. I'll leave a link in the video description where you guys could go and check out that video. And if you're somebody trying to consider uh, maybe this iMac or on the other hand, putting together a fairly powerful Windows PC or maybe even a Hackintosh and you're interested in that, I will be doing some videos in the future. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and enable those notifications. As always, I also have links in the video description to these exact models that I tested, also some recommendations based on your use cases, and also to the RAM that I recommend uh, if you wanna upgrade it yourself, which I would highly, highly recommend it. Um, I saved about $680 doing it myself than getting it from Apple, and uh, I actually have a step-by-step -step guide that I did on how, exactly how to install it. You don't lose your warranty, you don't lose Apple Care, none of that stuff, so save yourself some money or on the other hand, maybe get up to 128 gigabytes of RAM, which the system does support. Uh, and in that case, you save a lot of money and you can't even do it through Apple. <laughs> so uh, go and check out those links below that helps support the channel and I greatly appreciate it. Now let's get into some benchmarks. First, we're gonna start off with Geekbench 4's CPU test. And here in the single core test, we get over 25% faster score with the i9. And if we take a look at multi-core, the i9 iMac is about 8% faster. So yes, the consumer consumer grade CPU inside of the system, uh, it's actually faster. They're both eight core 16 thread. It just has a newer architecture and it clocks faster. So overall performance is better. Uh, this matters more in Premiere Pro where you still have some single threaded tasks, but if you're doing simple stuff, it is snappier overall, which is impressive. Jumping into Cinebench R15, which is a rendering benchmark, we just have a few percent faster score with the 2019 i9 iMac than the iMac Pro. So here we see a little bit less of a difference. This pushes all the cores to 100%. So what about the graphics? The best graphics that you can get in the new regular iMac is a Vega 48 chip with eight gigs of RAM, whereas the iMac Pro comes standard with a Vega 56. And just looking at the names, obviously 56 is higher uh, than Vega 48. It has more compute cores. So if we run Open CL and metal tests in Geekbench 4, we get about 18% faster in OpenCL and about 20% faster in metal. So if that's interesting, I guess we will see real world results. Let's start out by stabilizing a 20 second 4K clip and in Final Cut, uh, the i9 iMac is actually 15% faster. In Resolve, the score is identical. And in Premiere Pro, the i9 iMac is 25% faster. So what's going on here? Final Cut uses both the CPU and the GPU. And in this case, uh, this cheaper iMac is faster. DaVinci Resolve basically just uses the graphics, but the score is the same, kind of showing that maybe in the real world, the Vega 48 and 56 are closer than in those uh, benchmarks we saw. In Premiere Pro, it's mainly using just one core of your processor. And because this processor can go up to five gigahertz, that is why it's running faster. And we see the 25% speed improvement, which is noticeable. Before we move on, let me ask you a question. Have you ever went out on a shoot, got some nice B-roll, shot your interview, and then you realize you forgot your batteries for your drone, so you can't get that sweet establishing shot? I'm glad that's actually never happened to me, but I have had the weather turn bad, uh, had some flying restrictions pop up, or was just working on a project where the client didn't have the budget. If that did happen to you, let me know in the comments down below. Thankfully, our sponsor for this video, Storyblocks, has over 325,000 HD and 4K video clips along with After Effects templates and motion backgrounds. And you can download as many as your heart desires, or at least as much as your hard drive allows. New clips are regularly added and they're all royalty free, so you can use them for both personal and commercial projects. Go to storyblocks.com slash max to learn more. And the next time you're editing on your iMac, that's 13% faster than an iMac Pro, and you feel like your project could use just a little extra something, 
You'll have access to a huge stock library at a fraction of the cost. Go ahead and take your film to the next level with Storyblocks. Now let's take a look at a five minute 4K project with a film grain applied, color corrections, LUTs. In Final Cut, the iMac Pro is 6% faster. In DaVinci Resolve, the i9 regular iMac is 30% faster. And in Premiere Pro, the regular i9 iMac is more than twice as fast. So what is going on here? Well, in Final Cut, the iMac Pro used to be quite slow, slower than even the 2017 model because it didn't have quick sync. But over the last year and a half, Apple has made a lot of improvements, which Final Cut is known for its efficiency. And now uh, the iMac, even without quick sync, it goes really fast and it's actually slightly faster. I don't know if this thing will get improvements down the line. I would kind of expect it to, but at this point, they're pretty close. I mean, it was a 6% difference. In DaVinci Resolve, we saw a bigger difference. That's because of the quick sync chip. I don't think it's as efficient without it. And in Premiere Pro, we saw a massive difference, about 115% faster. We are using hardware encoding, so we are using quick sync. As far as editing in the timeline, the, the smoothness, the playback, it's identical. Both of these systems have no issue whatsoever. Stack LUTs, stack effects, multicam, uh, they do such a great job. Next, let's take a look at a similar project, except this time we're not working with standard 4K H.264. We're looking at the new H.265 or HEVC 8-bit footage and also rendering out to H.265 as well. Previous older systems had a really hard time with this. These ones are a lot better, but we still see a notable difference. So in Final Cut, uh, the iMac Pro is 125% faster, more than twice as fast. In DaVinci Resolve, 75% faster for the iMac Pro and in Premiere Pro, more more than twice as fast. What is going on? It's like the opposite of the last test. Well, there is one thing that is different between these systems, and that is the T2 chip. So Apple, when they released the iMac Pro, they talked about the T2 chip, and that can improve H.265 or HEVC. They didn't give us a lot of info. It was hard to tell what was going on. The iMac Pro has that chip, same with the MacBook Pro, same with the Mac Mini, but weirdly, this new iMac, the 2019, does not come with a T2 chip. The iMac Pro is utilizing it to encode the 8-bit H.265 footage and it's making a massive difference. Now, when you're editing, both of these systems play back perfectly, way better than 2017, 2016, those previous computers. Now let's take a look at 10-bit H.265 files. These are from the X-T3. I think this is the future uh, codec for most of these kind of hybrid cameras. Here in Final Cut, the iMac Pro is a little bit faster, about 10%. In DaVinci Resolve, the regular i9 iMac is a little bit faster, but in Premiere Pro, it's actually about twice as fast with the iMac Pro. As you could tell, to export this five minute project took way longer than with the 8-bit HEVC or the H.264. That's because we don't have good hardware encoding, but weirdly, Premiere Pro actually is much faster than Resolve or Final Cut, which makes me think that maybe it is using some kind of a hardware encoding. Now, as far as the timeline smoothness or playback, Final Cut is the best. Both systems are flawless. DaVinci Resolve is pretty good too, but Premiere Pro is not that great. It stutters and stuff like that, even though it renders super fast. Um, I am in talks uh, with Adobe guys who work with Premiere Pro. There's a lot of performance improvements coming in 2019, which is great. Now let's jump into Cinema 4K RAW. This is from the C200 Cinema RAW Lite, 4K 60 footage. This is with color correction and a LUT, exporting out a five minute project. In Final Cut, the i9 iMac is faster. In DaVinci Resolve, the i9 is 35% faster, slightly more actually. And in Premiere Pro, the i9 is also slightly faster, but it's pretty close. Now, this is something I was not really expecting. I thought, you know, they'd be almost the same, or maybe the iMac Pro would be slightly faster because the graphics is better, uh, but that's very interesting. When we're working with this footage, it's really kind of working and using the graphics, but the CPU isn't maxed out. It's running at about 50%, 60%, 40 something like that. Because of that, uh, the iMac with the i9 chip is actually able to clock faster, 4.3, 4.5 gigahertz compared to maybe 3.8 on the iMac Pro, and that's why we're seeing this kind of a difference. Both systems can play back 4K60 RAW with some effects added, but their graphics on both are pretty much maxed out. So if you're working with C200 footage, yes, you can play back, especially with Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve. Premiere Pro, you're gonna have to drop resolution and stuff like that. Finally, let's finish off with 4.5K Red RAW from the Raven with two lots, film grain applied, color corrections here in Final Cut. The iMac Pro is 20% faster. In DaVinci Resolve, the i9 iMac is 25% faster. And in Premiere Pro, the iMac Pro is 
is 7% faster. So with this codec, both our CPU and graphics are maxed out. This pushes kind of the most load on these systems. I don't know why DaVinci Resolve is kind of flip-flopped. Um, it's very interesting, I have no explanation, but uh, I guess if you're a Resolve user, you can save yourself some money. Uh, but either way, I'd probably want some extra cores, like a 10 core, maybe a little bit extra graphics performance. Now getting into the different configurations, this is where I really like the regular iMac. You have a lot more flexibility. For example, you can get eight gigs of RAM and upgrade the RAM yourself, and that could save you a whole lot of money. On top of that, if you don't need a great graphics card, say you're just not doing a ton of effects, not stacking a bunch of LUTs, you know, just doing standard 4K H.264 editing, you might not even need the Vega 48, so you can save yourself a good chunk of money. Along with that, with the iMac Pro, you're forced to have a one terabyte SSD, and in my case, I don't even need the 512 gigabyte SSD that's in that, because I keep all of my uh, media on external drives, either an external SSD or my RAID system. So uh, in this case, if you don't need the extra SSD, you can save yourself some money as well. In that case, if you get the i9 version with the 580X graphics, uh, 512 gig SSD, and then upgrade the RAM yourself, add in 32 gigabytes extra, you'll get a total of 40. You'll save about $2,000. Yes, you have a smaller SSD, but that might not be a big deal to you. You'll have a little bit more RAM, and you'll have very similar, if not better, performance if you're just doing standard H.264 4K editing. If you do want the Vega 4 graphics, uh, add another $450 there, so you're still saving about $1,600. Now, if you're somebody that wants to edit red raw footage, say you need the better graphics, you want one terabyte or more of SSD storage, uh, you don't wanna add in your own RAM, which I don't know why you would not do that. I have a guide to how to do it in the video description. Uh, say you just wanna load it up from Apple, kind of match it up really close to that. In that case, you're only saving about $750. The difference is not that big. Now, another use case that I get asked about often is for music production, for different scientific research and stuff like that. In that case, you don't need a good graphics card, but you do need a good processor and you need a lot of RAM. So say we have an i9, the 580X, which is a great card, almost as good as the Vega 48, 512 SSD, and you wanna put in your own 128 gigabytes of RAM, uh, which Apple charges a fortune for with the iMac Pro. In that case, you're saving $3,200 and you'll actually have a faster, ex better experience because this chip in this i9 clocks up to five gigahertz. So there you can save a massive amount of money. But if you look at the overall kind of grand scheme of things, uh, the i9 is a better deal. With C200 footage, you're faster with any program. Uh, if you look at Red Raw footage, it's fairly close, faster with DaVinci Resolve. If you look at H.265, uh, the editing experience is basically the same. The rendering is just faster with iMac Pro. And with H.264, uh, it's very similar, but a lot, lot faster with Premiere Pro. This is why I was really shocked when Apple refresh the system with the eight core. I did not think they'd do one with the eight core 16 thread. They're kind of really competing with the iMac Pro. I thought they'd do a six core or something like that. Uh, and for most of us, if we're looking at these numbers, if you're trying to go for something that's a little bit better on the wallet, something that's a better bang for the buck, it really, really delivers. And if you're trying to maximize your bang for the buck, we're seeing roughly uh, $1,600 to a $2,000 difference between the machines. And I think for most people, unless you got a lot of money, unless you're working with really heavy raw footage, this thing makes a whole lot of sense. Like I mentioned, there's gonna be links in the video description. Uh, once again, a big shout out to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. Definitely go check it out and sign up. They are supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate it. And there's a ton of great clips on there. This has been Max, and I will see you guys in the next video.